Bar Stool Sport. Bar Titus. Brandon Walker. Mostly Sport. Welcome to Mostly Sports, presented by Jägermeister. I'm Mark Titus. He is Big Cat, filling in for uh, Brandon Walker, who is out with a case of video games. Uh, video like, game-itis? Yeah, video game-itis. Today is... Uh, th- I hope Lane Johnson beats his ass. <laughs> How sick would that be? Today is Thursday, April 4th. We are live from Chicago, and we want to talk to you about Jägermeister, the 56 Botanicals, uh, all the great stuff that is inside of Jägermeister. But we really want to say two things. Jägermeister is great. But everybody has been drinking it wrong. How should you be drinking it? They're glad you asked. Ice cold at zero degrees Fahrenheit to be exact. Ice cold shots of Jägermeister. That's it. That's all they want to tell you. So wherever you're out, if you're hanging with friends or at the bar, maybe you're doing all the sports stuff or just the mostly sports stuff, call the shots. Cheers with Frosty. Zero degree Fahrenheit shots of Jägermeister. Damn, that's cold. And remember to check Jägermeister out at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister the core. 35% alcohol by volume. Imported by Mass Jägermeister, U.S. White Plains, New York. What do you want to talk about, Big Cat? Well, I want to talk about first, uh, shout out you guys. Hello. I'm excited to be back. I think I'll be back on Monday as well when we're in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is Jersey, and I want to say, oh, yeah. yeah, because I'm sure I'm getting killed right now by the yeah. family. I walked down here, and I, I like five minutes before, and I saw you guys all in your jerseys. I'm like, oh, fuck, I forgot it was Jersey. So I went, I turned around to try to go back upstairs, and you were like, no, I have one for you. You never one. gave it to me. People probably think that I just... No, no, no. This is by design. Uh, UT Arlington, the UT Arlington basketball program. I opened it. I opened the box on air, and then I realized I should have saved it. And then uh, they had a package for, for Big Cat, and here's your... Included in it is... Uh, shorts? I don't know. That's all they. That's all they gave us. Oh. Because you, you were riding hard for them during conference tournament week. So I I literally just bet them one night, and I stayed up till 2 in the morning watching them, and they were so much fun. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's something about that chair, I think. Yeah, tarps off. It's, it's, that's, well, I mean, that's, you that's, have that's to the, go. The, that's the tarps off chair. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, that's not bad. It's not the that's, best. That's not the best. You know what? Yeah. I am. <laughs> maybe I'm coming off the bench, so maybe I put on the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come off the bench. Okay, so there's my jersey. I have it on. I'm gonna come off the bench today. I think it's. I am off the bench. It says Big Cat on the back. It does. It says Big yeah. Cat Double Zero. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out all the all the uh, big boys. I'm playing youth sports. You're either double zero or twelve, depending on which way the, <laughs> the 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 jerseys went. You know, like it would either be they would start at like one would be an extra small and twelve would be the extra large. Oh, that's or a reverse. good point. I, yeah, I, that I was never, always, yeah. I was either twelve or double zero. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was that was how it worked. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for having me here. I got my jersey on. Don't worry, family. This feels uh, like a this feels like a good day to have you. There's a lot of weird shit going on in sports, yes. at least that I saw. Um, I don't know where you want to start, but I saw that there was a hockey fight uh, that I need to explain to me. I yes. saw that Malachi Flynn dropped 50 points in an NBA game, mm-hmm. which I need to explain to me. And they lost. I saw that Tiger Woods is abstaining from sex to get ready for the Masters, which I need to explain to me. Um, also, if we're doing mostly sports, so that would imply not sports as well. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind Connor explaining to us Hamas versus Israel. Yeah, <laughs> yes, Connor. Yeah, I'll do some research. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I mean, if we're just throwing out topics, might as well throw one out there. Uh, what 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 was the hockey? F- I I mean, I know what it was, but like, what was the? It rocked. That was the coolest thing I've ever five seen. Five on five, Devils Rangers. Those two teams when they play, throw out the record book, throw out the uh, record books. No love lost. Yeah, all that stuff. It happens every now and then. I don't know when the last time it happened, but like, there's something about when the hockey. Because usually it will be the two enforcers will decide they're gonna fight before the the <laughs> like right as the puck drops. Yeah, and I think that that was the decided. But I think it was just also like the rest of the t- the guys were like, yeah, let's go too. And there was a moment where there was five fights going on, and there was only four refs, <laughs> and it was awesome. And Rempy, the fucking big guy on the Rangers, that's all he does is fight. 
he's, he's I, I saw like a stat that he's he's had way more penalty minutes than like ice time this year. He was on he was on um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's awesome. Like, I mean this looks like it's out of yeah. like a movie. This looks like a And you see the the other two guys they're like, "Well, we got to fight too." <laughs> this this looks like a, a a hockey comedy movie in the 90s or something that you Yeah, you, look at the refs. They're like, "We're outnumbered. There's really, two in the middle." But this, there, there wasn't like a backstory. There was no context other than just. I think they had fought like the, each other. I think they had fought the, the previous game, right? And Rempy, yeah. in particular, had delivered an elbow to a guy, and he got oh, a yes. four game suspension from it. Oh, so sorry. there was some bad. Yeah, that was the backstory. Yeah, Rempy. I don't know if you can find a picture of Rempy, but like maybe a week into his NHL career, it looked like he had uh, gotten hit by like a Mack truck because he fought his first three or four games. He fought like every single game. <laughs> It was crazy. So these these guys still exist in hockey because that feels like something that would have gone away by now. I, that warms my heart to know that enforcers are still around. I think it's coming back a little bit, um, but I agree. I, I want – I know that obviously concussions are, you know, a serious topic, but I want at least one guy because I just like the idea – and Biz, we've had Biz on, and he said that, like, old school meatball takes, like, oh, we got to get in a fight to fire up the boys – like that does actually that yeah. is part of like winning hockey. Is like every now and then if you're in a funk, you just got to <laughs> fight someone the and then the guys are like, "All right, cool. Like let's go. Let's all rally together." Hockey does feel like it would be one of the last sports to kind of um modernize, I guess, or like kind of like it, it does feel like you'll have the dumb the dumb meatheads yeah. in hockey forever. Yeah. But that, that will that will always yeah, look at him. Think? <laughs> I'm on ice, 503 penalty minutes, 47. <laughs> and he's a beast too. He's oh, that was just during the that was just versus the Devils that I I, I saw that too, but that that is hilarious. 47 penalty minutes. He's Do averaging almost adjust? 5 minutes a game in, of of penalty minutes. Oh man, that's awesome. He's and he's he's like 7 feet on skates, I want to say. That's so he's an absolute beast. And he Do we have a clip of the Rangers ended up winning? And all the guys who got kicked out of the game, I would imagine that must have been like the coolest scene ever for everyone who won to come back and like see oh, all yeah. their buddies yeah. who fought to start the game. I'm sure that exists. I'm curious what they do in the locker room when you have to wait the entire game to, because a lot of guys will get ejected, you know, three fourths of the way into a game, and then you're not really in there that long. But yeah, um, yeah you probably just chill there. You chill there for two and a half hours waiting for a game to end. Eight people were ejected. Which is crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. You know what would really suck? Uh, like, if you got ejected in baseball and your manager got ejected too, having to sit with your manager. Oh would yeah. Suck. <laughs> yeah, that Make would blow. talk. Yeah. yeah, just sit just there. <laughs> just be like, so we're <laughs> so we're both ejected. <laughs> how's the family? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, Rempy's a, a legend. Uh, he's yeah he he got called. I think he got called up like what two months ago, mm -hmm. and all he does is fight. And he's just a fucking huge. And I, he doesn't really. He won a couple, but I've also seen him get his ass kicked too, which is. I think that's part of it, right? You have to. You have to take your lumps. It's, it's less about winning the fight, and it's oh, he did the oh, too small. But he could do the too small to anyone. See, I don't, I don't like the too small if you're really tall. I like the too small when like I like the little guys. That yeah, like when yeah. Pat Bev does too small. Yeah. yeah. To like Wemby. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's funny yeah. but like being like you're too small i'm seven feet like yeah that actually up. yeah that actually crosses the line that one hurts that, that's <laughs> that's a little too personal who's the enforcer on this show is it you connor i don't if know we, if we had to out of principle i would like if somebody did come in here and mess around i would fuck them up out of <laughs> you, principle. Might, you might have some dog in you i do yeah if you give me my mouth guard yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's the, the, mouth the weakest <laughs> sentence ever said. Again, I, I, the puck would get dropped, and Connor would be like, "Hold on, hold, hold on, on, one, hold yeah, on yeah. one second. I haven't found my mouth guard yet. Give me an equal playing field." Then, yeah, the guy <laughs> you're fighting pulls out a single chicken wing, and then you're like, no, "I don't <laughs> want this. I don't want this anymore, guys." <laughs> yeah, you uh, might be. You might. You have that dog in you. Sometimes it's in Caitlin, and sometimes it's in you. <laughs> people. <laughs> People were saying I had uh, that dog in me yesterday when I was eating the hot dogs. But oh yeah, what was that? What was that about? You got you got shamed for eating. Yeah, fuck it. Let's make this a Connor Griffin show. What uh? <laughs> explain to the people what happened here. 
I uh, my refrigerator stopped working the other day. I had to throw out all my it's food. A joke? No, this is for real. Oh, he brought this up on the show. He told the story, and we were all waiting for a punchline. Yeah. There, there was no cold air, oh, yeah. no cold air coming out of my fridge. Uh, I had to throw out all my food. I already like used a bunch of uh, Uber Eats money this month because I didn't have any food. It is the fourth of the month. Now. Yes, yesterday was the third. Yeah. Uh, and, and so anyway, I. Went to the back fridge, the leftover fridge. There were a bunch of hot dogs there from the Mincy opening day. He, yep. didn't, he didn't touch them. But I heated up two hot dogs yesterday, and people were getting on my ass. But that I needed to eat something. I was starving. Yeah, I don't I don't see any problem with it. Thank you. Yeah. Eating a couple dogs? Yeah. He was dumpster diving at like 1030. Because <laughs> I didn't have breakfast. <laughs> I had no food. Would you microwave them? Yes, yeah. I did. All right, that's kind of gross. Sorry. But that's, you know. Yeah. You're, you're also, well, you're 24? Yeah. I went grocery shopping last night. You're still in that like age group where you can just eat whatever, exactly, yeah. and just be like, "Yeah, this is dinner." Yeah. What uh, what'd you buy at the grocery? Hot dogs, didn't it? I did not buy hot dogs. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, well, so I, I'm on a, a meal plan, but I had to throw all that stuff out. So now I have to get back to the meal plan uh, temporarily for the next couple of days. I'm going to be going back to my childhood eating habits of like uh, fish sticks and chicken nuggets. But then I'm getting back to the meal plan. <laughs> <laughs> what you? What's your meal plan? I I get like boxes delivered to me. I'm thinking about um. I I did you guys see Ben Herbert yesterday? The Chargers strength and conditioning coach Badger. No big deal. Did you see his speech? No. Uh. We got to watch his speech. I'm thinking about maybe trying to find a strength and conditioning coach for this office. <laughs> Could you imagine well, if it, we had one? That would be awesome. It would be but incredible. Also, the interesting thing about training is the, that this guy. All right, wait. Pause it real quick. Pause it real quick. This is, it, like, I, I am, I struggle with my weight. I struggle with going to the gym. I, I look, I, I felt my arms yesterday. And I was like, God damn it. I need to get back into, like, trying to get a little bit of, like, tone in here and muscle. I watched this video, and I was like, I'm going to change my whole life. Because that's the type of, like, psycho that he is. And he's the perfect Harbaugh guy mm. who, like, Harbaugh can be the good cop every now and then and have Ben Herbert. But this... Watch his speech and tell me you don't think I mean, we need a strength and conditioning coach. We might even need him. Okay. I don't know how much it would cost, but it would probably be a lot. But I, I almost want to be like, Ben Herbert, I want you in my life. Come and just whip us all into shape and make us like the hardest dudes in the world. Express this to the guys as well. Big picture. I view training. The interesting thing about training is that I don't know if there's two people that view it the same. Uh, there are concepts that different people believe mm -hmm. in that may match up, but I view training in this way, and this is how I this told it, it to the guys. Um, my first goal is to make you harder to break. <laughs> yeah. Yes. People often may say, <laughs> training, uh, we're going to break, we're going to break you down and build you up. Uh, my goal is not to break you. My goal is to make you harder to break. <laughs> how are we going to go about doing that? How we train your neck in traps yes. to protect your head. Yes. Right. The most vulnerable areas of the body, in my opinion, in the game of football, the head, right and left shoulder, right and left hip girdle, right and left hamstring, right and left ankle. So through your training, you have to be proactive. So intense. At what the fuck, dude? Training those areas of the body. So the neck work that I introduced today, the trap work, the four part cuff sequence to address the four rotator cuff muscles in their shoulder girdle, uh, introduced them to some hip work, introduced them to some ankle work. Right, these are things that are paramount. If you want to make a football player harder to break, harder to break. your training has. You need to, to be become sound, harder to opinion. break. That's all my opinion. Your training has. We're to very be sound breakable. In those areas. Wait, we are, wait. Go to the end when so he talks about emotional. One, he, he's like break. emotional intelligence, consistency. Oh yeah, he he does a whole you thing to about show up every day and putting repeatedly the do back. what you are capable of doing. Consistency is incredibly valuable. Attention to detail. Right, there's a way we do things. There's a way we train, and there's a way we uh, – like when we, we had two-and-a-half-pound plates we used today, and when they put those plates back, the plates are stacked, and they're about 10 two-and-a-half-pound plates high. When they put them back, they put them back a certain way. Every – it says rogue at the top of the plate. Every rogue is perfectly square. It doesn't matter if it's the second plate or the tenth plate. It goes back precisely. <laughs> no different than a DB's eyes or his footwork or an so offensive insane. lineman's feet or his hand placement, like ways we practice attention to detail. 
Uh, we train a certain way, but we also how we keep the room. Uh, just how we do everything, there's a certain level of detail involved in that. And then emotional <laughs> stability. Uh, you will never see me. Yes. Some guys, uh, coach is one of them. Uh, Chris Hinton's a guy that's, you know, we were together uh, at Michigan. These guys, they've, they've been around me one, some, couple, some guys a couple months. Uh, I don't change. Meaning, oh, Coach Herb got the juice today. He's feeling good. He's happy. He's excited. Well, then it rains. And I feel a certain type of way. Or I, I told the guys, I have a wife, two boys, two dogs. I have a car with four tires. If I get a flat tire, I'm not going to take it out on you. If something happens, I don't change emotionally. When I walk in the facility, who you know me to be is who I am every day. It's never changed. Uh, this is my 23rd year. No one, people that knew me uh, 1998 or 2002 would say, yeah, today I'm that same person. Emotional stability, incredibly important. Like, I'm comfortable enough just... as a man to say that I want to be dominated by this man. <laughs> like, I want this man to come into my life and dominate just, me. Yeah, and he would. <laughs> he would. Yeah, he would. He just, just his presence alone. Well, all these strength coaches look exactly the same. Oh, yeah. There, and I have a long-standing take that I think the strength coach, maybe not in the NFL, but in college football, is the most important coach in, in a program. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that, that that guy is more important than the head coach sometimes because they are with the players yeah. for the entirety of the offseason. They are with them. They, are, they, like, they touch them. They're there. I should have said touch them. But whatever. You get what I'm saying. Like, the um, <clears throat> strength and conditioning coach at Georgia, he was at Alabama, won a shitload of national titles with – with Saban, then went to Georgia, and Georgia won two national titles right after yeah. that. Like, these guys, they just, they, they, I don't know. Some about him. His intensity, like, just fired me up. And the fact that he also listed his, like, two kids, two dogs, and four tires all in the same sentence. <laughs> like, they're the same. They're, <laughs> these are all things that are in my life. They have a purpose. My children are there to someday take on my name. My tires are there <laughs> to get me to work. <laughs> like, it's, it's just crazy. I love it. Yeah. Do, is there any strength coach that has hair, by the way? No, Every I don't. Every single one of them is, is, is yeah. bald with a goatee <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I've ever seen. I, I don't trust um, one without. You don't want, like, a uh, hot young guy as your strength coach. Right. right? No. Like you can't have some 32-year-old guy that looks like he's about to run a marathon. Right. right. No, you don't want that. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, I, I do think at, college, at the college football level, strength coaches are, are super important because uh, it really does, no, not 100%, but, like, 90% of success in college football is, like, is your team bigger, faster, stronger than the other team? And there is a little skill involved, but football, football, college football is the one sport where you can just line them up and look at look at that group and look at that group and say, all right, well, that group's going to beat the fuck out of that group. Right, and it's also the, the time in a lot of these guys' lives. Like, once they're in the NFL, a lot of this stuff is kind of you are what you are. But when you get a 17- or 18-year-old, like every single, you know, spring they bring in all these 17 18 year olds there's a guy who's on the roster who's probably like 220 pounds you got to figure out a way to get him to 280 290 and that's the strength and conditioning coach's job like I remember when I was a freshman at Wisconsin I, like the freshman orientation class it was like maybe 20 of us Joe Thomas was in it with me and he was a tight end his first year and he mm -hmm. was like 225 pounds and he knew that like he had to put on and I think that was actually I think I think Herbert was there at Wisconsin then and he, he he made him harder to break. <laughs> make Making harder someone to... harder to break has to be the coolest thing you can do. Just be like you are you're you're, you're a very soft, breakable. Yeah, you're like a a, a teacup right now. I want to make you steal. Guys like that, like <laughs> seeing something like that, just reminds me that there are people whose viewpoint is the exact opposite of mine in the world. I mean, we talked about this on the yak with like uh, when we were going through our our cold plunge phase. Yes, you, you and I were aligned where we're like. Because KB's whole point of view is you need to be uncomfortable, and or Will Will was more of the uh, more banging the drum, but he's like you got to make yourself uncomfortable because that makes you stronger. And then you and I are like, do you? Yeah, <laughs> why, why right. You make your life very comfortable. Um, yeah, that's how I, that's I how I feel be... when I watch strength coach talk. Strength coaches talk. Where he's like, I I haven't changed. I'm the exact same guy as I was in 1992. And I'm yeah, like, is that yeah four tires. I <laughs> I I, and I will I... never change ever. No, you can present me with new information. Doesn't matter. Yeah, Get out of my fucking face. <laughs> I will not change a goddamn thing about myself. I also think that I'm I'm in a very relatable camp of. I know I'm not going to change anything about myself, but every time I see one of these guys talk, I'm like. 
I kind of aspire to be that. I, I I'm not be going that, yeah. to do it. Yeah. But I that guy could motivate me into thinking maybe someday I would. But yeah. I won't. Yeah. But it's nice to dream. <laughs> Harder to break. But you don't actually want to be that guy. You right. just want to be – you want to take, like, one sliver of that guy. Right. But as it turns out, to get that one sliver, you have to you have to buy the whole package and become just completely insane. Yeah. He and, also, like – emotionless and – I mean, he's he's tougher than the weather. Think about <laughs> yeah. that. He's like, if it rains, I'll be the Doesn't same matter. guy. Like, yeah. who's tougher than the weather? Yeah. Dude, I've been in such a bad mood this week because <laughs> yeah, of the weather. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. When the weather sucks, you're just like, this sucks. And when it's sunny out, you're like, oh, I like life. Right, right. I can't He's imagine. tougher than the weather. This guy walks outside and it's sunny. He's like, don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. His wife's like, honey, it's a great day. Should we go to the park today? He's like, don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. Do not give a fuck. It's the same every day for me. I'm harder to break. Uh, I want to talk about Dave and Buster's. Last year, there were 35 personal fouls in the championship game. So this year, we're going foul, F-O-W-L for foul, F-O-U-L. With every foul, we're enjoying a chicken wing from Dave and Buster's. And with all you can eat, chicken wings. And a $10 power card starting at twenty two ninety nine every Monday and Thursday after 4 p.m. for the duration of the tournament. You can go foul for foul, too. Terms and conditions apply. And don't forget, throughout the tournament, we're washing away your sorrows with $2 beers and $5 shots. Price and participation. Price and participation may vary every Monday and Thursday throughout the tournament. Dave and Buster's, hey, today is Thursday. Uh, Dave and Buster's is celebrating with all you can eat wings and a ten dollars power card starting at twenty two ninety nine. Terms and conditions do in fact apply. Uh, so you have been told that you're Josh Kitty, Connor. Yeah, Chase NBA comps. He compared me to Josh Kitty. What did who'd you get? I got Paul George, which is uh. Is that an I'm, insult? I'm, yeah, I think I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think I'm fine with that, right? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's really good at he's basketball. He's really, really good. Um, so that's – why Why did he do this? This is – Che did a thread comparing all the Barstool coworkers to to, to NBA players. Uh, yeah, and, and Ebo, you got T. Yeah, Powell. he could have just put short white guy. <laughs> like, yeah. he, could, he didn't have to do, like, push – try to pretend to give me compliments. No, but this one I think is spot on. Based off of the description, I also think you shoot a lot like T.J. McConnell. Your form and everything? Yeah. Uh, so he said Ebo is T.J. McConnell. He said that I am Paul George. <laughs> and he said that, uh, yeah, I mean, you could see the you could see the comparison there. Uh, and then he said that Connor is Josh Giddy. <laughs> on court game only. <laughs> on, on court game only. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Che is in the Peter King line of thinking remember when peter king just randomly was like i would vote for darren sharper to be in the hall of fame <laughs> we're like wait we we weren't discussing that dude he's like i care about on the field only oh, on the field only <laughs> yeah uh i'm nervous about mine what was pull up che or pull up uh connor's description again because i connor is a big big guard slash point forward he's got a smooth compact handle and can get to the rim finishes well on floaters has a solid shot, but doesn't shoot from range often. Can be more engaged on defense, but is a plus rebounder. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, there are literally no other players to compare you, you to. Yeah. It Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Josh Giddy has a very unique game. I think people say that about him when they see him. They're like, we've never seen anything like this guy. Well, so Che texted me last night before he posted that. He really should have used a picture of you at uh, the Olivia Rodrigo concert <laughs> for the Josh Kitty comp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he texted me saying, uh, I have one for you on the court only, Josh Kitty. And I said, oh, God. And then he said, hey, great player, lottery pick. Yeah, so, great player, lottery pick. I'll take that. He does. He's the one guy who can say it, and he really does mean like he's not trying to take a dig at you. No, yeah, I, I, I know he says wasn't, it, yeah. and they're clearly saying something different. Very funny, though. I think, though, I was thinking about it because um, there was a time that if you were doing these player comps, like I could maybe, maybe at like my best, be like uh, uh, Joe Kim Noah, where it's like rebound defense, mm -hmm. doesn't look at the basket more than you know, like when he's fifteen feet away, he won't even look to take a shot. But as I've gotten older, I've I've gotten softer and like don't want to get hurt, so I'm just running three point line to the three point line. I think if he was being honest, I think I would I think I'm probably like a Morris twin now. Sucks. <laughs> that sucks. But I was thinking about it. I was like, who am I? Yeah. I think I might be a Morris twin. Yeah. Whoever the worst I, of the two is. I can't I can never remember. I yeah. feel like I feel like closer to like almost like an Al Horford because I feel like when you go up against big size you you defend well. Yeah, I do. I body Yeah, you team. also you yeah. all, you're you're Al Horford in that you can 
You're you're not as good as you once were, but you're as good once. Yeah. As every now and then I can hit an open Toby three. Key. Yeah. 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 Every but so I also often you could miss really badly. If if we give you one, if if it's one game for all the marbles, and we're putting you in a big one on one matchup, you can bring it a little bit. Yeah. More than, yeah. Okay, like, I like that. But if we're playing a full day of pickup, you will hit a wall. You will like kind of. Yeah, like <laughs> I, you will be like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I can't. I, you'll pick your spots here and there, but when it's time to like lock it, it's game five, and it's like. We need you to guard Joel Embiid. Yeah, I like you that. Can, you can bring it a little bit. Because there's definitely times where it's like, oh, he just airballed a three. What's up with him? It's like, well, he's playing his second game of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, his legs are he's gone. He's been playing for almost 25 minutes now. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to understand. Ask that's 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 a tough back to back that he had to play. <laughs> I think my current comp, as I was watching, as I watched a lot of Duke basketball this year, I might be Kyle Filipowski. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm extremely soft. As it turns out, like all, I'm taller than everybody. So you think that I want to go rebound and and guard big men on the block and stuff? I don't. I just want to float around the three point line and shoot threes. That's yeah, I'm my happiest. I, I that's all I, I want to do. I had a, a realization on Sunday when we were <laughs> yeah, watching there, that game with Kyle that's... Filipowski. My like. My Duke hate, I, I said I was going to give it, I wasn't going to just go from Coach K to John Shire and be like, I hate them just as much because it's not fair. You know what I mean? Like, And I like John Shire as a guy, but I wasn't going to just blindly be like, I still hate Duke with the same passion I used to. I'm going to let it build. And I think Sunday I finally reached it, and it's the moment that I reach full Duke hate is when I see one of their white guys, and I'm like, I want to see that guy cry. <laughs> that's when I re That's when I full, like. That's yeah. when I hit Nirvana, when I'm like, you know what I really want to do? I want to see Kyle Filipowski yeah. cry. Yeah, that's 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 the moment. Speaking of Duke White guys, did you see this uh, Cooper flag? Uh, oh. I'll have to send you. This. Oh yeah, I uh, hated it. The uh, what? I'll send you. He, I'll, I think I'll, that's I'll the first time I've ever heard him talk, and it was. Oh, I know, crazy. and it's shocking. Yeah, he's shocking. Impossible to understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, is that a main thing? <laughs> nah. Let me see here. I mean, he, doesn't he go to school? In, where's Montverde? Is that in Georgia or? Florida. I can't in there. Watch this and, and cover up the uh, cover up the uh, subtitle somehow. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. I, I I'm trying to think of who tweeted it. That I it saw. sucks because I I was on Cooper Flag like two years ago and now I'm gonna have to hate him. I have yeah. no choice. He turned his back. Well, you were uh, on him because you wanted him to go number one in the draft. Yeah, which looking back is kind of a fucked up thing to be like we haven't had a white guy go number one American white guy go number yeah. one Cooper Flag. All right, TJ. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But cover up the like, cover up the subtitles, and then try to figure out what he's saying. I mean, it's all the Duke fans that are hurt. Like, look at the season. Like, I don't think anybody expected us to get to where we were. To be honest, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're bringing a lot of energy next year. You know, a lot of excitement, and we're gonna be all right. We gonna get, we gonna make it as far as you know what I'm saying. So just look forward to a lot of success and a lot of energy going forward. Now, <laughs> what? <laughs> Nobody Maine. expected number two Duke to make. He is it from yeah, yeah, that's what I hated about rural it. Maine. Oh, that's like a Maine accent. No. no. Oh, that not. yeah. That's I'm saying, saying that yeah. is not like a. He's from like the outskirts in Maine. That is not what they sound. Like. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. That's <laughs> I was I was shocked by that. But yeah, I thought you were. I don't know how much I could say. <laughs> I didn't know if that was like a somehow like some sort of New England accent mixed with no I, like I think code switching. Oh, yeah, I think like mixed kinda, with a little code switching. He also kind of talks like a a kid that like. Maybe like when he was like three, they're like he hasn't said any words yet. <laughs> sure he can hear. <laughs> like, what, like what's going on? But yeah, he's. I'm gonna end up hating him. Yeah, also, they have so. like a Tyler Hero situation, right? Isn't like the best player in Wisconsin going to Duke this year? I mean, we yeah, we lose everyone. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, like I don't know. they have like a uh, the, a top twenty player from Wisconsin, some white kid that's gonna go play at Duke. Where's Where's AJ Store going? He's not getting a million dollars, is he? Nah, I think I he is. I think I he's getting a million dollars somewhere. Yeah, someone's that someone's gonna pay him a million dollars. Wisconsin losing like their best players because especially if it's like Duke, because I remember uh, Hero was. Oh, okay. Well, like he couldn't have gotten into Wisconsin. It's the dumbest thing that we do as sports fans. We're like, well, he probably couldn't have gotten in. <laughs> yeah, it's like just shitting on some like seventeen year old. I remember Diamond Stone was like that with Maryland. It was like, well, he couldn't got he couldn't have gotten into the the prestigious academic institution of University of Wisconsin Madison. That's why. <laughs> and it's really that that's just the worst coping yeah. mechanism that we use. But then when someone goes to Duke, it's you kind of lose. Right, you kind of lose right. your ability to say that. Right, 
Right. And and Oh, his SATs must have sucked. Dude probably got like a fifteen on his ACT. These That's Duke wild. guys do have a knack for like skipping they reclassify, they skip a whole year of high school, and then they still somehow get into one of the more prestigious academic institutions. Yes. That's crazy how that happens. It hurts my feelings every that's, single uh, time. That's it's, crazy. Um, is mock drafting one overall next year? Cooper Flag? Yeah. Look at that. Okay. His Which, shot is weird, though. Did you see the three he made? It's like, I don't know what it... You, Titus, maybe you can find yeah, the yeah, three he find, made so uh, Titus can, can break it down, but it was like... I meant to watch the McDonald's All American game, and then and then it came and went, and I didn't watch it. I don't know how else to describe what happened there. I was just like, "Oh yeah, McDonald's All American game coming up." I'm I'm put on like some promo email, like somehow the McDonald's game has my email address, and they'll they've been sending me emails for like two weeks about like practices coming up. Like, are you sure you don't want to come? We can get you a pass, all this sort of thing. So I was like, "Yeah, the McDonald's game. This is a great class, especially as compared." to this year's freshman class. Right. Next year's freshman class in college basketball is going to be awesome. Yeah. So I was really excited for the McDonald's game. You know I was locked. And then I completely missed it. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing. I just like It was uh it was right after the first NIT game. Maybe that's what it was. I was watching NIT. Yeah, and then they yeah, they started the Georgia Seton Hall game. I don't know, maybe hmm. and maybe it's a fine shot. I mean it's a high release, so very hard uh, to block. Maybe it's just a little it, slingshotty. And it's also like it it's not quick. But, you know, you can't Larry Bird that. Larry yeah. Bird had a slingshot yeah. shot, and that worked out well for him. I'm just used to seeing guys, because guys have gotten so good at shooting, especially in the NBA, where it's like, you just catch the ball, and it's just, yeah. you know. It's like the, uh, like, have you ever watched Clay Thompson tape, which is so incredible to watch him, like, when he's, like, when he'll catch the ball, and, like, his entire body won't move. There's no dipping. There's yeah, a, there's, there's a no lot dip. Of, yeah. A lot of the guys will catch it, and they kind of dip it below their waist. Yeah, he will up, just no dip, catch, catch it, and just go like that. Yeah. And yeah. just it's just insane, insane to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm ru- I as of right this second, I I am a Cooper Flag fan. I'm cheering for really? Cooper Flag. I think there will be a moment where I'll, where I will turn on him, but I think it has to happen naturally. Okay, I, I, I you know I don't think you can just yeah I don't think you can go into it saying I want to hate this kid because that actually is a poor reflection on you. And I think you have to let moments like Kyle Filipowski crying at Wake Forest happen. So then you, you, it's more natural. I agree with you. I'm going to do the same. Yeah. That's very – Because there are, there are white guys that play at Duke that you – Don't hate. Don't hate. Right. Every so often it happens. Like Luke Kennard, I think, is one that – I like Luke Kennard. I like Luke Kennard. But he falls of. into anyone who does anything lefty is cool. That's true. Cooper. Lefties are cooler when they – like especially like dribbling behind their back. I remember when I saw Luke Kennard dribble behind his back for the first time, I was like, that guy's probably the best player I've ever seen in my yeah. life. <laughs> that is true. It's that easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially like you're you're driving, you stop at the elbow, go behind your back, and then hit a pull up. Left yeah, like, lefties oh are just my God, they do things the cooler. Best player I've ever seen. Um, it is kind of wild. If if UConn wins the national championship, uh, Cooper Flag not going to UConn. I, I'm I'm like UConn fans don't care because they have the best program and they've won. They're go, they're about to win two national championships in a row, but they also are very loud about how much they don't care. But isn't that good but, for UConn because they UConn can never. Be I think like part of what UConn, especially Danny Hurley, does is like they're so good, but they always can play the we're not a that's blue right blood. yeah we're always on the outside we you know he yeah. brings it up all the time like we're in we're in stores Connecticut yeah like no one's talking about us yeah he's gonna have a hell of a time today whenever he does his press conference talking about this flight stuff yeah that was just put on a platter for him <laughs> it really was. he might have actually delayed the plane himself yeah <laughs> he probably did because <laughs> it, it uh. It sucks, no question about it. Their sleep schedules are going to be disrupted a little bit. It's ultimately not going to make a difference. They they have three days until the game gets played. Yeah, like they'll be fine. But yeah, he's absolutely going to. This is yeah, make a this big is perfect for this. him. Yeah, yeah. Like they tried to keep us down. They they screwed up our planes. Um. Yeah, he's going to be. Oh, Jack Mac. Oh Jack no. Mac's <laughs> on the case. Oh no. Todd runs a sleep optimization company now. He is an expert in sleep. Oh no, not good, not oh. good. It takes one day for every time zone to adjust, so three days assuming nothing crazy happened. But the fact they got delayed and we up all night. Um, but they they are playing the late game though on Saturday, so that helps. But is it because even later, Connecticut time? Yeah, what time do they play Connecticut time? They play nine thirty. Oh no, they play nine thirty or ten thirty. Oh no, ten. Yeah, I don't know. I th- I think if UConn plays well, we'll say 
that yes. it didn't matter. And if UConn plays poorly, we'll say the plane. It was all because of the plane. <laughs> Remember the the best college team ever got derailed from a plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they weren't. And we're not talking about Marshall football. Yeah. Uh, was that too much? Was that too much? <laughs> was that too much? Where, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> was that too much? Where is the excitement level for this Final Four? I'm I'm high. I'm very high. I think it. I think it's the perfect Final Four. In that, I it, mean, it, you have every single storyline you want. Yeah, NC State beating Duke was huge for that. I think. If, I think if Duke won, um, this would have been an all-time hated Final Four. So yes. and having NC State and having DJ Burns there to cheer for is nice. Uh, I don't. I don't know how well it's going to go for NC State against Purdue, but um, yeah, it's it's. I, I'm excited for the Final Four, but I also am very worried that Saturday is going to be boring as hell, which will set up a very fun Monday. I don't know, man. Maybe it's just the the fact that I am just keep watching all of Quig's hype videos. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's exactly what it is, but uh, something about this NC State team. Maybe they're just a team of destiny. But it is the perfect Final Four in that you have the history-making UConn team trying to go back-to-back first time since Florida. You have the Alabama, like, on the rise, fun brand of basketball, like, first time being in a Final Four. Purdue's re- redemption arc, haven't been there since 80. Yeah. And then NC State is the perfect Cinderella where they're a Cinderella, but they also are a major power, you know, five program. And, like, you, you don't want one of those, like, when when uh, St. Peter's gets to the lead. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Sucks. They're a Cinderella who could actually win. Right, Yeah. right. Yeah. And I am worried about DJ Burns. Like, I, I think he's going to get – Let's just say the first three minutes of that game is going to tell us everything. Because yeah. if DJ Burns gets a foul like on Zach Eady's first trip down the floor, yeah. I might just throw up my hands and be like, well, that was fun. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. But what if what if DJ Burns just keeps just doing his fucking spin moves? What if he gets Zach Eady in foul trouble? That would be crazy. That would be awesome. You think it's almost better for him just to go down the court and shot fake a bunch the first like five yeah. possessions? Spin move, shot fake. Like, uh, you know what he should do is uh, when Georgetown played uh, – MJ in in the uh in in the national championship 82? Uh, in, in 82. Yeah. Uh John Thompson told Patrick Ewing I want you to goaltend every yes. single shot to start the game. Yes. I don't care how and if you go back and watch the game and I it it, it was on YouTube. I, I watched I watched it not that long ago. Um I don't know if it still is, but uh it is so fucking funny watching like the ball is he he's he's the the goaltends are the most egregious goaltends you've ever seen. Yes. And the whole point was like he was trying to intimidate Pat, he wanted Patrick Ewing to intimidate North Carolina. They, he didn't want North Carolina to see the ball go through the basket. He wanted, for the rest of the game, when Carolina comes to the paint, they're going to be thinking about Patrick Ewing being there. All of these things were playing into it. As you look back on it, you're like, damn, that was a close game. Maybe if John Thompson didn't hand them 10 points out of the gate, yeah. maybe that would have that would have been better for Georgetown. But uh, maybe that's what DJ Burns needs to do. It's like, don't even worry about scoring. Just go down, like take shot clock violations. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, spin, spin, pump spin, faking, keep spin, spinning, spin, 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 <laughs> pump fake, pump fake, spin, pump fake, spin. <laughs> and then the buzzer sounds. You're like, that's all right. All yeah. right, we didn't get a foul on that one. We'll try it next Mission time. Mission accomplished. <laughs> you don't know when I'm going to shoot it. Yeah. I, I like that strategy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm I'm so excited for this final four. I do think it's it's the perfect setup. And and I yeah, DJ Burns. I mean, this NC State team. This is why this is why you love sports. Yeah, it really is. You eat all this shit, and your teams give you nothing but heartbreak over and over and over again to one day hopefully have a run like NC State's on. Yeah. Like, that's a – that's a for NC State fans, this stretch has been something you will talk about for the rest of your life. Even if they don't win at all. Like, you'll be like, remember when we won, we ripped off, you know, nine straight games yeah. and got to the Final Four and no one believed in us? And that's, I mean, that's the coolest part about sports. Uh, it, 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 what the other part that's awesome, NC State is very likable, and everyone's gonna root for them. The other three, it's ambiguous as to whether they are likable or not. Um, the idea, like Alabama, it's their first ever Final Four, and generally, when that happens, and a program is in their first Final Four, you you kind of cheer for, or you don't cheer. Yeah, I don't know. There's like something cool about it, and you're like. No, but first final four. Wow, new blood. This is fun. Um, Alabama also is not likable really at all and as it's, a basketball program. It's also because of the football and the football. That's part. the it's that's a, yeah. the reason why you can't root for Alabama. They've been so dominant in football that you just in your head you're like, well, they have it all. Yeah, like I I know that's not fair because it's two different sports. 
But I think most fans see it and they're like, Alabama again, even yeah. though they've never been to the Final Four. Right, right. Um, but they, they play a fun brand of basketball, but also – it, how fun is it really? Um, I don't. I, Rico's ruined Alabama for everyone. Yeah. UConn is everything about them. We should hate them, but we don't. We kind of like them. Yeah. I, 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 if I didn't have a bet on UConn, I would. I would be all in on NC State. Yeah. So I think that's where the majority of America will probably. Land. People will pull for NC State. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like that. Uh, I like that. There's no obvious villains, but also no other than oh, NC Zach, State. There's no Zach, he's obvious. An obvious villain. Yeah, but I mean, he's the most obvious to one. us. He is. Yeah, to the rest. I think not. for most of America, he is an obvious villain. I I would hope so. But. Yeah, I I think that's that's probably true, because people will turn on this game and be like, "What is this?" <laughs> why, yeah. why? I had an awakening during the Elite Eight because I had never watched a Purdue game standalone. Yeah, and that was um, well, I watched the game obviously Wisconsin, but I was doing the phone clips, but that was tough. Yeah, like, I couldn't I couldn't stomach it. it yeah. It's. I've described it. It's it's when other people watch Purdue basketball, it's like finally getting the validation that maybe you're not paranoid and crazy. Yeah, because everyone's like, "Oh, I see what you've been yelling about." Yeah, and it's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, nice." It's it really, like basically, what about Bob? If at the end everyone was like, "Richard Dreyfus, you're not crazy." It is the uh, what what's the time. what's the thing where like uh, first they came for the blank and I said nothing because I wasn't a blank. That's yeah, like, you're talking about the Nazis. Yeah, it's the, Na yeah, the yeah. Nazis. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Nazis. That's, yep. uh, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Zachy. Yeah, yeah. But that is uh, it's like uh, all the people at this company, like Wisconsin, will play Purdue and Dan's losing his mind. Yeah, and like, everyone's chill just out, like, dude. dude, chill the fuck out, dude. What are you? And then Edie plays their team and they're like, "What the fuck? What, yeah. Where are you guys? To this help me? Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true." It, it, Unless you're going through it, you don't fully understand. But the but Purdue as a program and Matt Painter as a coach, I think are in position. Like if if this was the Carson Edwards Purdue team, I think people would love that yes. Purdue made the Final Four. I think they would be a team that everybody would want to see win the national championship. Yes. Uh, they would be extremely likable. So that part of it makes it ambiguous as well because I do think that people are over the Zach Eady experience, but also, you know, Purdue is not a program that uh, like garners we, hate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We Purdue has been Charlie Brown trying to kick, kick right. the football forever. That like, and Matt Painter's a good dude, and yeah, me. like there's nothing personal yeah. about it. And I I've said it a million times, but like Zach Eady, there's nothing. I don't personally hate Zach Eady. He's doing what like you can't blame Zach Eady for just playing the game the way they ref the game and and how the rules are set up. Like mm -hmm. he is. It's almost like the push the tush push where people get frustrated with it. It's like, well, stop it. You yeah, can't, like just stop it. Figure out a way to stop it. Stop yeah, Zach Zach Eady is is like running the tush push every play. Right, and it's like <laughs> it's, it's like, frustrating. But guess what? I can't be it's like if the Eagles came out, received the opening kick, and then they ran the tush push <laughs> eighty yards down the field for right. a touchdown, and then you're like, oh my god! But then. All right, they're not going to do that again. And then the other team punts. Yeah, the Eagles get the ball and they run the. And it's like you can't <laughs> personally like, hate Jalen Hurts for that. He's just doing the thing that works. Like <laughs> it's it, they're just spamming the play that works over and over. It is it is no different than playing when you were a kid playing a, a video game like Madden, and the guy you're playing against is just spamming the same play that you. Can't yeah, that's stop what I do. No I've what. been playing a lot of in save football though three oh, right here. Shark wheel. I have. Yeah, yeah I, have I have two plays. Spam I shark wheel. I have two People plays. hated me for that. I have two plays. Stop there. running Shark Wheel. <laughs> I get it. I understand it. Uh, visible. Draining a half-court buzzer beater to win the game, not easy. Switching to visible and saving on wireless with no hidden fees. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Switch to visible. The wireless company with nothing to hide and get one-line wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon, just $25 a month. Every month, taxes and fees include a one-line wireless, just $25 a month. Taxes and fees are included. Visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide. No hidden fees, no gotchas, unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon. Bench wireless with hidden fees and switch to Visible. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Um, Where are we going to eat wings on Friday? You have yeah, to decide. Yeah, I know. Should we find I'm, I'm that? Here. Yeah, let's figure that out. Um, well, then we'll just like dox where we're going to go, but we need to. So That's Titus true. and I uh, – Every Final Four we get, well, Stanford Steve and I, every Final Four we get, uh, we do a wing date where we just, guys just going to get wings together. We've told the story a bunch, but Titus, when he first heard about this, 
Uh, I've never seen more of like a soft California cuck boy uh, when he was essentially like, what do you mean you guys are just going to get wings? Like, that's what guys do. I have to. But now he's part of it. I have to step in and paint a picture for the people. Uh, <laughs> this this was my watching the Chargers strength coach give a press conference <laughs> moment. That's what it was. It was less like. Because everyone loses the context, and it's like, Titus, you've never had wings before. I've had wings a billion times in my life. I, I have eaten wings. I, I, I'm I familiar with wings. It was 1.30 a.m. We were at a bar. Uh, Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. And Steve and Dan are in the corner strategizing where they're going to go the next day to get wings. <laughs> And they, they turned to me, and they're like, do you want to get wings? And I was like, I guess. Like, what is that? And they, and they could just smell it. They were like, you're not one of us. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get wings. And then, it, and then I said, I don't, I don't know if I've ever, like, plans going to get wings. I think it's just kind of something that comes up. I think it's like. No. We're, we're out at a bar, and someone's like, you should try the wings, dude. The wings are good. You, you, who wants wings? You guys want wings? Let's order some wings. Like, that's, when, that's where I eat wings. I've never been in a situation where it's one thirty and we're like, all right, clear your schedule tomorrow. <laughs> We are going out to get wings. Connor will back me up, but then again, I don't know. If he doesn't eat wings. Yeah, I don't eat wings. I don't know if I want Connor to back me but up. But I would, I would do it for other foods probably. So I'm sitting there just like my jaw's on the floor like watching these two just gorilla-looking men. <laughs> like these two just barrel-chested fucking men's Strength. men. Tony just Strong. Just talking about like the fucking buckets worth of wings that they are going to put down tomorrow. Um, and they just called me a pussy over and over. And I was like, I mean, this is this is probably fair. And then ever since then, we've tried to amend that. Yeah, we Every did it in New Orleans. Point. Yeah, you, we you did came. it in New Orleans. There, okay, so, so so to understand it, I, I, I love wings. I think there's two different types. There's going out to dinner and being like, should we get some wings as an appetizer? That's a completely different situation. Yes. When you wake up and you're like, Today we're getting some. <laughs> that, that, that was the part that was new to me. I was like, and, I've never. Yeah, because you're like, I'm gonna put down because you know the difference. Like you guys, maybe not you, Connor, again, but Ebo, you can probably back me up. Like you know when you're like, I'm gonna go put down twenty to thirty wings. Like, Wing nice. Yeah. Sit down and I'm going to just eat wings. Yes. Don't fuck with any sides. I don't want the mozzarella sticks. I don't even need the curly fries. Just give me the wings. I don't care what the Connor. weather is. I don't care yeah. what my two kids are saying. My two yeah. dogs. My wife. My four tires on my car. <laughs> Today is wing day. Wing day, yeah. And on wing day, you know where you're getting out of me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that might be the only way to get Ben Herbert's mood change. <laughs> It'd be like wing day. Like, oh, uh, shit. So, yeah, tomorrow is our, our, our wing, wing day. day. Yeah, we're going to have to move it up. So, usually it was a Sunday, which was one of my favorite days of the year because usually when we travel for these trips, it's like nonstop work, work, work. Yeah. Final four is a little mo more relaxed where you have the game Saturday. We're going to do a barstool live, uh, I think, from – the barstool bar on Saturday before the game. But then Sunday we have nothing. And so that's usually our wing day. Steve has to go back on Sunday. So Friday's our wing day. Friday's the wing day. Um, yeah, we just got to find a place that serves cauliflower wings. Yep. Uh, for me. <laughs> nice salad. Uh, nice salad. Can't have breaded wings. I don't know how Arizona I don't, is. I want sauce on the side, please. As a wing town. Uh -huh. Arizona doesn't feel like a big wing town. <laughs> what are the wing towns? Yeah, what <laughs> this is... This is another... Well, Buffalo's a another wing town. another blind spot. Yeah, Buffalo yeah. makes sense. But... Anything in Ohio. Yeah. That's Houston. a wing town. Yeah. I've had great wings in Milwaukee. Minneapolis was great wings. Yeah, you gotta... It's gotta be like... It's got to be a bunch of people wearing sweatshirts and like I don't care how many wings I eat. I'll I feel like high. I feel like wing guys wear cargo shorts a lot too. <laughs> I see I see dudes wearing cargo shorts being wing guys. That's fine. Uh, I I embrace yeah. it. I just yeah. Are you always a, a flat or a drum, or do you kind of switch up? Or you I switch back and forth. Yeah. I would prefer I prefer uh, the drums, but I I I could do both. Yeah. I'll switch. Yeah. Yeah. Because you First can't style. be the guy who only eats the drums. Like when you get up, uh, if you're all sitting around and there's 30 wings, you can't just be picking only drums. You got to do your job, and you got yeah. Are flats the part. flats are the man's man? I don't you know. Got to work for it a little. Yeah, bit. you got to work for it. But yeah, you got. I switch back and forth <laughs> from my tongue to your clit. <laughs> we actually requested to get Ray Allen on because he probably would be at the final four. I don't know how that interview would do because we're just i think it would all be about the tweet yeah just over and over she'd be like so another question about the tweet has he ever done any interviews about that i don't think so so yeah it would be an exclusive i mean he's got to hate us right because no one talks about that tweet except us <laughs> yeah. and you guys talk we about just it keep it alive it's like jfk's eternal flame as long as pft and i are alive 
that tweet will always be talked about. Is that coming up on 10 years? <laughs> might even be more. Yeah, Ray Allen deleted that and said to himself, phew, that was a close one. Because I <laughs> – yeah. 10 years later, the number one later, sports yeah. podcast. Yeah. Pull it up, TJ. Because uh, it used to be on Twitter when you wanted to DM someone, you would write the letter D before the message, mm. and it would just go. And I think that's maybe what he did wrong. So it's very old Twitter. But, yeah, he uh, – I'm getting there. When you masturbate, think about my tongue or your clit and switching back and forth from my dick to my tongue. When is that date? Oh, we don't have Oh, it doesn't have a date. It's, it's so long ago that they didn't even put dates on the tweets. 2017? 2010. Oh, oh 2010. 2010. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Wait, what? They updated it in 2017? What was the update? That's a seven-year update. You used to be able to text. When you would get a DM, yeah, they would Yeah, they would text you. Yeah. You would reply. I, I got caught up doing that. I, did, I didn't say... I, and, I, I I texted back to a DM one time and I just said like okay or something and then it tweeted out from my account okay yeah. I, need to, I need to change the tweet handle tweet so cha- <laughs> and he also did the thing I hate where he got in his feels where he's that. like I'm gonna stop giving people Ray Allen tweets I hope that it's amusing yeah. people but I'm either gonna change my password or stop tweeting altogether oh no yeah don't take that away from us <laughs> folks if you're gonna make fun of me for this <laughs> yeah I'm gonna take my ball and go home do. and not tweet anymore. <laughs> That and the I did not fuck my cat tweet are, oh, yeah. Shane Dawson. are probably Dawson, too. Yeah. But that one was on purpose, right? I didn't. Fu- he, like, well, there really... was people talking about him fucking his cat because he had a podcast clip where he talked about fucking his cat. Oh. That's an easy confusion. He talked about. Yeah. <laughs> See how that could happen to anyone? Cat is a sex toy. <laughs> I did. I didn't fuck my cat. I didn't come on my cat. I didn't put my dick anywhere near my cat. I've never done anything weird with my cats. I promised myself I wasn't going to make apology videos after last year's thing. What was last year's thing? He, he's had a ton of things over the years. So I'm just trying to be as short and honest with uh, this as possible. One of question mark. One of question mark. Again, if you didn't fuck your cat, you didn't have to put in the part that you didn't come on your cat either. Because I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. In the podcast clip, he says he comes on his cat. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, if you're going to fuck your cat, I would assume you'd pull out yeah. and not <laughs> and not do a back shot on your cat. But then he's <laughs> then I'm like, wait, did yeah. he did he do a back shot on his cat? <laughs> <laughs> you would pull out, right? Uh, <laughs> Connor, what would you do? <laughs> How would you? You are the that? safe sex guy. I, I guess I am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on condom or not. I don't know. <laughs> You'd fuck your cat with a condom? <laughs> oh, my God, Connor. I don't know where to go. Connor's going to have to put an apology tweet. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know where to yeah, go. So it's apology. Tweet it out. Griffin. Oh, fuck. I've never even known. I am not Josh Giddy. I do not fuck <laughs> my cat. I do not. <laughs> yeah, rough uh, me. Tiger Woods is a, speaking of cats and sex. Yeah, oh, nice segue. <laughs> Look segue. at that. Tiger Woods is not having sex in the lead up, and this is something he announced. I guess it's a report from someone close to his camp. <laughs> Is it his girlfriend? Yeah, it's a, it's his girlfriend. <laughs> who, did Tiger Woods who would Hawk report this? Write this report? His penis did? That's crazy. I, Tiger Woods abstaining from sex while training for the Masters. Is it Pull not? Pal. It, it, pal. It, is this not bad for Tiger Woods? Yeah, it, when, when he was – wait, was he though? Was when, when he was at his horniest, was he playing great golf? I think so. I don't think you were you're I don't think he like came into but, sex addiction. He was like probably a sex addict the whole time. Yeah. Cuz I I it's true. When, when I think of Tiger Woods at his horniest, I just think of when we knew about it, which is probably if if he stopped playing well, it was less that he was horny and more that like he was dealing with yeah, because, all the shit being public. But before that, when yeah. he was super horny and we didn't know about it. He right. was probably, probably playing great. I want to yeah. say like 2008 was when the whole thing happened. So you, he had to, it had to have been before that. And he was winning everything before yeah. that. So yeah, I think this is a bad way to go about it, Tiger. It was nowhere close to, to OJ Chase, but uh, I do remember that kind of being our generation's version of the OJ Chase where he was like Tiger was had his, his wife took a, golf club to and he hit a tree and like everyone's like there's like little details coming out of like what's going on it happened like, over what, thanksgiving yeah we're all Everyone like was home and like we're all glued family. to the news yeah. like trying to figure out the the craziest what's going part on too is because, life yeah because we're we're at a point now where we've known post tiger getting all this shit happened for so long that i don't think people remember just how like squeaky clean and yeah. perfect tiger woods was like, yeah he was uh 
uh, like for the big brands, he was like the perfect advertiser, the perfect, like all he did was win. All he cared about was winning. He just dominated. He was a robot. Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was a robot. A, he was an absolute robot. Um, yeah, and and that's that's what made it so compelling. It was like he wait Tiger Woods ha- yeah. has not only had, he fucks he fucks and he does it a lot. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we were Everyone? we were all stunned. Oh yeah. my god, one of the and the, the most market- part. One like, of the most it, marketable athletes on earth yeah. is using his fame to get women? What? What? He's, huh? fucking, he's <laughs> fucking in parking lots? Like, Tiger Woods shouldn't be fucking in parking lots. Yeah, that's true. That's not something that should happen. Like, when uh, I think there was, like, a... Like, Johnny Manziel fucks in parking lots. <laughs> that, you know what I mean? That, that makes sense in our head, yeah. Yeah, right. Like, if you told me, oh, Johnny Manziel was fucking in, like, a, a B-dubs parking lot. So, who's 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 uh. who's, <laughs> who's, who's uh, taking that from Tiger now? Like, who's the modern athlete that's like, there is no no way he fucks in a parking lot. And if I find out he does, my whole worldview is going to be shattered. Shohei Otani. That's a good point. He's never had anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, who is that? I mean, LeBron I can't, is obviously... I can't picture Shohei Otani fucking, for what it's worth. The the idea of Shohei Otani doing anything other than striking dudes out and mashing baseballs. And, and like, submitting parlays. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moonshot parlays. Uh, yeah, I, I I mean, LeBron oof. LeBron does deserve credit for, like, being in the public eye for two-plus decades and never having... Like, the worst thing you could say about LeBron is, like, he just has been fake reading The Godfather for 10 yeah. years. That's well, I could, I could see I could see LeBron, though. Every so often, he... Oh, he's probably done it. He's probably yeah. been smart about it. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I don't... I know. wouldn't be shocked about LeBron. I'm, I'm trying to think of who... who... Who's the, who's the like, golden child marketing, like, perfect? Mahomes, but his family... I mean, Mahomes might be the answer. Like, if you... Yeah. If you heard, if you heard, yeah, I, Mahomes got a citation. I would be shocked. He was having sex with his wife yeah. in a parking garage. Because I think Mahomes is yeah. like, yeah, I do think that uh, for anyone who hates Mahomes, like I, I've never understood it because he does feel like just a really good dude. Yeah. You know? And like that, yeah, Mahomes might be the answer. Mahomes. Mike Trout fucking in, in a- Mike Trout. In like a strip mall parking lot. It's kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think he like- he's I don't like, really think about Mike Trout ever. I think yeah. of him as how, like, Quakes thinks of people. I think Mike Trout just goes to the baseball field, and he only exists at the baseball yeah. field and at Eagles games and nowhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd agree sure. with that. No, yeah, Mike he's Trout. He powers I, down when he gets home. Yeah, I, he's, like, not even going down the shore for, like, a weekend or anything. He goes to his garage, and his wife just plugs him in. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about Mike Trout. No, it's if, so if Wright, sad. If Wright Thompson followed Mike Trout around for a month and then wrote a 10,000-word article about Mike Trout's personal life. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't really care to read this. No, I don't. I don't even think it's I. Sad. I don't. I still don't think I care. Right. I had Angels fans come after me when I was like, I, "Can Mike Trout please get a trade?" Because like, I want to see him in playoff baseball, and he he is in that weird, like Damian Lillard when Damian Lillard before he asked for a trade, where there are some athletes where it's like, dude, we wouldn't care if you asked for a trade. Like yeah. this isn't a James Harden Kevin Durant situation. Like we get it. You should ask for a trade. No one's going to hold it against you, but he's just he's just, just rides with them. being out there. Yeah, just hitting home runs. Just That's doing the thing. Kirk Cousins. Kirk oh, Kirk Cousins. Cousins, yeah. That's a good one. The Mike yeah. Trout, uh, the, the, the one that lives, like, rent-free in my head. Uh, I'm going to find that tweet. The famous uh, Mike Trout. What was the guy's name? Atomic, I want to say. Uh, every time I see an Angels... Every time I see an Angels highlight, it's like Mike Trout hits hit three homers, home runs, and raises average to five twenty eight. While Shohei Otani did something that hasn't been done since Tungsten Arm O'Doyle of the <laughs> nineteen twenty one Akron Groomsman as the Tigers defeated the Angels eight to three. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's every game. Every game. <laughs> every game. <laughs> but yeah, that's it is. We need more Mike Trout. Uh, I'm trying to think of basketball players. Uh, Jalen Brunson maybe. Yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Would, if Jalen Brunson had a, I don't, a I, the Jalen Brunson doing really like anything crazy off the court would be shocking to me. Jokic, maybe. Jokic. Luka maybe. just sits at home and plays video games. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, I think Jokic maybe also plays. Video Giannis kind of too. Yeah. Luka's gonna demand a trade at some point. There is something about being a foreign athlete that you can just kind of. You you present yourself to the American public. You don't have to. 
I don't know. Like, I, I do think that, like, every foreign athlete – Rudy Gobert is the exception because he yeah. started COVID. Yep. <laughs> but did. it does feel like foreign athletes have an advantage where they can just be extremely likable because we don't really know a ton about them. And don't, all we really know is, like, what they want to tell us. Yeah. And, like, Shohei we know nothing about. And yeah. Which is why the – yeah, I don't know. Even Jokic. Like, like Jokic we know is, Jokic loves horses. Yeah. And rocks. Just know, like, a little slivers about them and – I don't know. There's like something about them that's like extreme. Like the idea, because we're sitting here naming these basketball players. The idea of like European basketball players wanting to fuck just like would break my brain. But of course they do. We, yeah, we do like know. Of that, course, yeah. Of course, Luca wants to get it in, right? But Giannis is on record, horny. Yeah, Giannis. You know Giannis. Yeah, okay, true. okay, yeah. okay. He is on record. No, yeah, I, I of course I remember, forgot he went on record. Yeah, I, I yeah. remember. But like, just in case, <laughs> just in case any of our audience might not remember. <laughs> when did he go on record? When uh. He had a, a blowjob button. You remember that? No. no. Oh, oh, yeah. No. He, was on IG Live. <laughs> he was on IG Live, and he's like, now uh, the freak can be a freak on the court and a freak in the sheets because he had a, a blowjob button that he would press. When oh, he so he really oh, did okay. go All right. on the record. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. the record, yeah. Oh. yeah. I didn't. I missed that. He's Kawhi's, like, never, horny. Kawhi's never been horny. Oh, that's a great point. Kawhi's, Kawhi's a good one. Kawhi's never been horny. It would be awesome if – oh, yeah. So, guys, uh, you know, the freak – Stop! <laughs> <laughs> on the court and on the shit, oh you God. know what I'm saying? So she bought me this too. Stop. Ring for blowjob. <laughs> so guys, I'm uh, happy that, that, that those kind of novelty gifts still exist. <laughs> yeah. Still go to Spencer gifts. A, and... Yeah, from a forgotten era, been ring for blowjob. Uh, I got. I want to. <laughs> Connor, say something else. Um. Chartreuse. Okay, there we go. Oh. Uh, cutting your hair at home is <laughs> chartreuse. Right. That was the first word that came to mind. Chartreuse. I just yeah. wanted a buffer in between the Giannis clip and uh, talking about Wall. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You said chartreuse. Yeah. Uh, cutting you your hair. fuck cheese? <laughs> <laughs> what cheese would be the best to fuck? Hold that thought, Big Cat. I just want to talk about Wall. Uh, cutting your hair at home isn't as hard as you think. Give your first DIY haircut the old college try with help from Wall. Wall is the brand used by professionals and has been in business for over 100 years. Being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Guards aren't just for on the court. The Color Pro Cordless Clipper is your styling MVP with an array of easy-to-see attachment guards, ensuring you can easily score the perfect haircut length. Color Pro Cordless is rechargeable and wireless which allows you to use the clipper on the go or when it's charging because looking sharp should be a slam dunk by the wall cordless color pro today wall. So I honestly think people would say like the, 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 your mind would immediately go to Swiss. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you'd rather like a soft cheese, right? A brie. Yeah. Nice yeah. Brie, brie or a burrata. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like a nice oh. burrata. Uh Oh, Whoa. Oh, fuck this. Whoa. The A's plan to move to Sacramento for the 25 to 27 seasons with an option to play there in 28 as well. The team announced they will play in whatever park, just over 10,000 seats with grass outfield seats to increase capacity to 14,000 for at least three seasons. Wow. Uh, hmm. They just, they really just hate Oakland, huh? They just, like, really hate the people of Oakland. And this is so fucked up. This is extra fucked up. Because what the A's are doing is they're now moving to a city that, fought, like, famously fought to keep their their team in town, in the Kings. Yeah. And they're now putting Sacramento, like, I guarantee you that if you ask Sacramento, like, 100 Sacramento, Sacram Sacramentians. Sacramentians? Sacram Sacramentees? Sacramentos. Uh, if they want this team, they'd probably be like, no, fuck no. And now they like have to sit there and Yeah. That's a that's a shitty thing to do. And also it's close enough that they're not turning their back on we're not turning our back on Northern Oakland, California. Northern California. We yeah. still are like we thought you guys would like this move that we're still staying in Northern California. Yeah, that sucks for like imagine if you're a uh, 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 Sacramentees and you spent the, all this energy saving the Kings, and then now you're the, the refugee for a uh, organization that's doing the same thing to another city. My brain can't make sense of professional teams moving. It's I mean, I know, I know it's money. Jerry Reinsdorf's going like, to try to do it with the White Sox. The idea of, like, it's, it's, 
I don't know. I don't know. It's well, it's that's like a that that's it, it. It blows my mind that, because that you could just cheer for a team and they can just be like, "We're going to take your team and move to another city." I think the, for the longest time we were like dumb as sports fans, and we've gotten a lot smarter. Like you saw in Kansas City, I think it was yesterday, they voted against uh, like a billion dollars going into the Chiefs and the Royals uh, stadiums, yeah. and now fans and and citizens of like each city are smart enough to be like fuck this dude you you have billions of dollars yeah you chose to buy this team why the fuck are we gonna pay for it so i think that we're finally getting to a point where because it used to be that it was always they would run the same script every single time we want a new stadium we want the city to pay for it city doesn't want to pay for it and then and then the owner has this out where they're like well, I tried all of the yeah. things that I had to try. Like, I tried to stay here. You guys didn't want to pay for it. I have to leave. Now we, we're, we're smart enough to be like, no, that that's bullshit. You have billions of dollars. You can build it. You're going to make so much money off it. Why should taxpayers have to pay for it? Yeah. Shout out to fans. That's uh, The Oakland A's situation is like the weirdest thing that's ever happened in sports. It's, I mean, the whole Oakland... Going to play in a triple-A stadium that's for gonna three be years? I mean, the, yeah. the Coyotes kind of do that right now. But... Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, Blutman. Blutman. Hello, oh, Blutman. <laughs> it, it is past 10 o'clock. Yeah. Blutman, will Go. you be rooting for the Las Vegas A's? Uh, I was going to put it on the ticker. I thought I'd just walk in instead. Nobody in Vegas wants the A's. Yes. Yes. Nobody in Las Vegas wants Pump the A's. Pump them up. We don't want them. Yeah. Keep them in Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. They're moving to Sacramento. More. Keep Go back. them in Oakland after the three-year stint in Sacramento. That's really just the vacation to get things back on track. Yeah. Keep going. Uh... We only want the Golden Knights and the Aces in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Go. And the yeah. Raiders. And the Raiders. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want an NBA team there either. I want all the money to go to the Golden Knights, yeah. 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 Dynasty. Yeah. Love it, Blumman. Fuck John yeah. Fisher. Yeah. Echo what Big Cat said. <laughs> you know who Wait, that is? It. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, so say it. Say it. Though. Why? Say it. I'm not a cusser. <laughs> oh, you're frick, not. Frick yeah. John Fisher. I don't say that. That just sounds so lame. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. Blood and Hey, you never asked. You... you don't have fucking any of your tweets or anything? You know who sneaky isn't a cusser either? Ben Mintz. Ben Mintz yeah. kind of prides himself on only having said fuck on air like five or six times. No shit. Huh. We got, and, and Jake Marsh, maybe that's a Jerry after dark. <laughs> we just keep. Uh, you can leave him, he say fuck. Liam, Jake, and Mintz. Yeah, yeah. they have to sit <laughs> in there. Until one of them cusses. You have to yeah. fuck or fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah fuck. Yeah, fuck or fuck. <laughs> All right, see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> fuck or That's fuck. Not... It's everyone's. It's America's favorite kid. Yeah. Fuck or fuck. You get two uh, options. The only... Yeah, it sucks. You, you you don't want the A's. No one wants. I mean, it's bullshit. This whole thing is bullshit. Piece of Keep shit. Keep the A's in Northern California. Las Vegans don't want them. Vegans? They call them that. I don't know why. Las Vegas locals just sounds better. Las yeah. Vegans is how you People say that? People be saying that, man. It's a weird place. <laughs> huh. Las Vegans. Yeah, Vegans. I hate that. Are you a Las Vegan? I suppose, yeah. I think you could just say for Las Vegas locals, you just be like weirdos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like Austin and Portland pride themselves on the whole weirdos thing. Yeah, true. Can a third city have it? That might be too much. That's too much weird in one country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, we don't go to the strip that often. That's what they call them. That's yeah. There we go. That's a good. Yeah. True. Very <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. That's Las Vegas locals. We live far away from there, like yeah. twenty minutes away. We're yeah. not there often. Yeah. Actually, we're not going to the buffet at the Bellagio no. as often as you think. No. Rolls Never. right off the tongue. I I we used to go to the buffet with our grandparents. Then uh I think my dad was like, Stop taking them to the buffet. <laughs> like go out actually eat real <laughs> elder yeah. food. I don't know. That's fucking I great. Think story. That, happened. that might not happen. So is there happen. a world where Vegas keeps the A's from coming? There's a act that the uh, which shows how fucked up our country is, and I don't want to go too political, but there's a there's a group that's, I think it's like s teachers and students, or students over stadiums, I believe it's really? called. 
Yeah, and they're trying to raise a bunch of money, which makes sense. Like, instead of paying billions of dollars for a stadium, why not let the kids learn more? Mm -hmm. Nevada, Feels like that would be a healthier use for our society. Nevada and Mississippi right down there at the bottom of the education system. So let's Nevada do this over really, stadiums. like, impressively competing with Mississippi for that last place title is unbelievable. Yeah. High dropout rate as well. Yeah. So the, they're – so like if that happens and the A's are like we want to move to Vegas, the Vegas can just be like fuck you, no. We have the Aviators. We, we have the Aviators already. Yeah. yeah has that ever aviators. happened? Has a has a team ever tried to move to a city and the city's like we don't want you? Don't Stay know. out of here. I mean, it's been what wasn't it going to be twenty twenty seven? Then it was twenty twenty eight. Then it's already twenty twenty nine. Yep. Yeah. At what point does it just become? Yeah, the Vegas try a, get a new plan. Yeah, the Vegas A's are basically like uh, Alabama. Uh, announcing a game against a home and home against Washington at this point. Right. It's like, yeah, well, this is never yeah, going to yeah, get here. Is, yeah. 2030. All right. Yeah. All right. Blubman. Anything All else? Right. Did we screw into that? You're wearing your moose head. We didn't do our jersey. Yeah. Oh yeah. We did reveals. Yeah. Moose you go heads. first. I had to wear the moose heads Jersey after, um, they got swept in the first Whoa. round of the QMJ trail playoffs. Oh, no. Wait, say that Zero. again. The, the Mooseheads lost the first round of the Q playoffs. Wait, no, say the whole thing. I don't remember. The QM. The QMJHL. <laughs> Where is it? On here? Yeah. The Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Lost, I knew, I knew the, that. They lost the first round to, I believe, a Katie Bathurst Titan. Good for them. They're moving on. They're gear and logos and everything kind of eh, mediocre kind of the yeah moose head off. was this an upset was this uh are the moose heads uh, frauds? i think it was an upset i believe moose heads were number two in the queue in the regular oh, season no. there was some issues with uh jordan dumay who i i believe that's how you say his last name uh best player on the team having one of the best seasons in Mooseheads history and that's that's a program that's had nathan mccann walk through those doors there was there was issues there with his hip and a drunk driving situation and he didn't play in the no, the playoffs no. so that was big uh that, no, that no. was a big miss but kate brian eagle's still alive up 3-1 in the series those are my guys <laughs> all right love it great up <laughs> great fired up yep. great update for blood you're welcome. fired up can't wait yeah. for the memorial cup uh, here's a, here's a weird story. You could, you could, uh, help us through, but I, I need Connor to explain it more. Um, the Phillies. Oh yeah. There's a wedding at the, the, the Phillies can't play baseball in their home stadium because there's a wedding that's been booked. Allegedly. Allegedly. There are citizens bank park came out. There was a statement saying there is no wedding, but the Reds broadcasters were all in unison. Like there's a wedding. Uh, there the guy yesterday alluded to it like oh yeah citizens bank park is booked on thursday he didn't come out and say there was a wedding but he was clearly like pissed off about it and then somebody found a clip this actually yeah this dylan wilkerson guy found a clip from the night before saying and there was a clip of the broadcasters during the game saying that there was a wedding D dylan wilkerson daily caller on the brandon walker college really show. oh wow i believe he watches this show too maybe i'm wrong there but oh. yeah he exposed oh, the sweet. story that there was a wet or there is a wedding at citizens bank park that the the stadium itself was denying the existence of. Yeah. So I, I that's this is a great story too because imagine like the Phillies going up against like a bride being like this yeah. is my wedding day. <laughs> was a, like I will not give up the stadium today. For further context, the weather was dog shit yesterday. Uh there was a 3 hour and 55 minute rain delay. The Phillies were like, we're playing this fucking game today because this was the only time that the Reds came to Philly this year. They would have, they both, both teams had an off day today. And so the Reds were like, well, why don't we just play tomorrow? And the Phillies oh, were like, oh, that's why. And yeah. Today there's a wedding. I, it feels like an easy thing to, so did, did they play the game yesterday? They played the game okay. after three hours and 55 minutes, even though. And the reason they were so adamant on getting it in is because they, they could not use the stadium today. Right. What people believe. Because, yeah. yeah, there was rumors that it was booked. And then Dylan Wilkerson came out and said, well, there's a wedding. And the broadcasters also said, the Reds broadcasters said, there's a wedding. I didn't know they rented out. Which, yeah, you can. So there are weddings on the official Citizens Bank Park website. You can book a wedding. But to book it in March well, or in April, the rather. Wedding, actually, because like I, one of my buddies got married and we were like, we went and took pictures at Wrigley. 
but like the wedding wasn't there. Like you, the no, you, the wedding the is there. You could actually have it doesn't say specifics, but it says contact us if you want to have your wedding at Citizens Bank Park. Oh wow. So but to again to book it in April during baseball is crazy if that is the case. Wouldn't you how much were, does it cost? Oh I, I don't know. If you were a big enough Phillies fan to want your wedding at the ballpark, wouldn't it be cooler to have it during the game? Like <laughs> Which is yeah. also I, I feel like I would rather do it during I would feel like I would rather like be able to rent out like a section of Right. That's definitely a stadium. minor league thing you could do. The minor yeah. league thing in my work that had weddings once a season, there'd be a wedding before. Yeah. I mean I, I wouldn't want to do that, but like if I was no, yeah. someone who was like we could get married and, and I assume to to rent out the entire stadium that costs a ton of money. Yeah, I don't know. To be that rich. Right. But also, I, you could you could get married anywhere in the world and you're like, I want to get married at this ballpark, but I want all of the cool shit about the ballpark out of here. Oh wow! I don't want the game to be going on. All right, so I I guess I have no choice but to do this. Um, if you and Caitlin Walker do get married, <laughs> I will pay for the full wedding. If, it, if wow, if it's bank thank you very much. Baby. Okay, so that is weddings are very expensive. They're very expensive, well, but I'm willing if if ass. that to consummate that marriage. If you you have to, it has to be you and Caitlin Walker. I'm not paying for you to get married to one of your like flussies out there. <laughs> uh, you two get married. And I will pay soup to nuts for the wedding at Citizen Bank Ballpark. Wow. That would be lovely. That would be lovely. I uh, I, I also I need to be able to take BP during the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, maybe you guys have it around, like, short center field. Uh, we can kind of make it like a home run derby thing where, Sweet. like, you guys all have gloves. Yeah. And I'm just fucking smashing balls yeah. into, into the wedding. Uh, but other than that, you get to decide everything else. All right. Speaking of smashing balls, um, what's uh, what's next on the agenda with uh, the Caitlin Walker? I, I we're at a point now, and you said it perfectly. Like I'm working myself into a shoot. I don't. I I, I think that was the peak of what we could do. Okay. On Easter. Okay. Now the only I get, thing is I get legitimately, asked, I get asked about that more than anything else. In my dude, life. there are people around the office who are like, "Yo, are you yeah. Caitlin Walker actually dating?" I'm like, "No." Like, we're not I, th I think the next step is pretty clear. We got invited to a couple weddings on on uh, opening day. Well, you the, see if there's a plus one on the on the invitations, and then you go to that wedding. Take her to North Dakota. Yeah, I I do really want to go to North Dakota. I was looking at my phone. <laughs> of course, yeah. uh, we got invited to a wedding in North Dakota. <laughs> I was looking for plane tickets, but also I was like, oh, these are kind of expensive. It's only like an 11-hour drive. Road trip. Yeah, it's scenic <laughs> An 11-hour drive? drive? I, I drive I 11 think, hours. All right, I think, I think you and yeah, you, and, you and Caitlin have to do a road trip to this wedding. I drive 11 hours to go back to Philly. I drive 11 hours to get back to South Carolina. Like, it's not bad. I would, I would drive yeah, to North is, Dakota. I got the, it's it's uh, June 14th. I would go. That's uh, Is that the one that Brandon doxed, or was that? Oh, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> Brandon doxed. We're Brandon's gonna... so stupid. <laughs> you picked up a wedding invitation and said, oh, there's a wedding at this date, at this time, at this chapel, in this yeah. town. Yeah, for these people. And we and didn't like... do it for the second wedding, yeah. so, like. Yeah. The, the good on. part is that it's in North Dakota, so yeah. I don't think people are going to really no. try to crash it. But you should go. I, I would like to go. I've never, Like I said, I've never been to a wedding, so this is. You don't think that there's other people out there that are listening to this show like Connor who are like, well, I've always wanted to go to North Dakota, and <laughs> now this is my chance. Yeah. You don't think there's more of those types? Maybe. You've never been to a wedding? Mm -mm. I've you'll always been on the a, fringe. Yeah, you also get to a point where like you'll be like, I don't want to go to any more weddings. Right. Especially if I imagine you're in... Like bachelor parties yeah. consistently. Yeah. And that, it's like, like, okay, I'm like, spending way too much money. Everyone weddings has that like three summers in a row that are just ruined by just like our whole <laughs> summer is just weddings and bachelor parties. Yeah. 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 I would go, I would like to go to a wedding, but I want it to specifically be the third wedding for the man and second for the woman. Mm. <laughs> so if anyone has that, Set I'm in. That up. Okay. Yeah. I, I like going to one wedding a year, I think. All right. More than yeah. that. Starts to get, it's one's, one's yeah. One's a good. Yeah. Yeah, because then you get to the point like I've all my friends are married, so it's like we went. I went to one maybe the last one I went to was like two years ago. It's like oh, this was nice because it had been a while. Yeah, and now it's like yeah, I could maybe I I need my friends to start getting divorced. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. I gotta get they gotta get divorced so that way I can go to more weddings. I have to read about Dave and Buster's. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell the people that last year there were 35 personal fouls in the championship game. So this year we're going foul, F-O-W-L, for foul, F-O-U-L. With every foul, 
we are enjoying a chicken wing from Dave and Buster's. And with all you can eat chicken wings and a $10 power card starting at $22.99 every Monday and Thursday after 4 p.m. For the duration of the tournament, you can go foul for foul two. Terms and conditions apply. And don't forget, throughout the tournament, we're washing away your sorrows with $2 beers and $5 shots. Price and participation may vary every Monday and Thursday. Today is Thursday, so this this would uh, be today. Throughout the tournament, Dave & Buster's is celebrating with all-you-can-eat wings and a $10 power card starting at twenty two ninety nine. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, the, the Orioles scored 26 runs last night? Uh, the Tide. The Young Core did. They scored 26? Yeah, so... Wait, what? The Orioles, Young Core, and AAA scored 26 runs. Oh, oh. Right. They had 29. I was going to say, I had the over in the Orioles game. Yeah, that's pretty sure it was just yeah. seven runs. They, they, <laughs> they won their minor league game 26 to Correct. something. Correct. Yeah. 11. And they, everyone's getting pissed off because they're playing like four or five guys that probably just shouldn't be on the major league team, and then they go and they score 26 runs. Are they doing the thing the Cubs did with Chris Bryant where they're trying to hold him back? And well, Jackson, so Hall- hey, yeah. Jackson the- Holiday is, they think by the time he's 29 – He's going to be like an otherworldly player, and they want that age twenty nine. Yeah, no, we did cheap. this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, is, it is what we did. But he's ready at twenty. Debate. Yeah, it was yeah. a huge debate in Chicago with Chris Bryant. People were like, "This is fucked up," and they're like, "Well, he's just not ready." And then he was ready nine days into the season. Yeah, yeah. Jackson Holiday is absolutely ready to play major league. Baseball. Yeah, for sure. But it, it also it makes sense for the organization. Why would you, if it's like a I, Chris Bryant specifically? I think it was nine games. And it was like, why would you give up an extra year of control for nine games? Yeah. That's nuts. And it sucks for the player, but that's just what it is. I mean, the thing now is that they've set up a system where if he gets any sort of top three in rookie of the year this year, they get an extra draft pick. Yeah, basically an extra first round draft pick and $2 million more in signing bonus pool, which is absolutely worth forfeiting that year, I believe. Yeah. Uh, how many how many games does he have to miss to get? It, like if he even if if he were to come up in July and finish top three in the rookie of the year, it wouldn't matter. Which he could do. Yeah. Yeah. So it, they should yeah. wait if for his service time. No, he, he would get the full year of service time oh, no matter what. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So he'll probably they'll probably bring him up. Yeah. Yeah. The Orioles have that. Like, uh, there's nothing better than in baseball when you have a bunch of dudes that you've just been hearing about, and you're like, and they're about to get here. And then they do like the this is the first time in my life they've done. The big, the big move of the offseason where they went and got Corbin Burns, which, yeah. was, which was awesome. Yes. It's like, let's win now, though, you know? Like, I guess we're getting a little greedy, but... I know I want to bet them, but I also... I mean, I, from your advice the last couple of years, I bet them and at crazy numbers. Now they're, what, like 12 to 1? Yeah, I've, I've been... Every time I get a, a bonus bet back from DraftKings, I've been placing it on Corbin Burns, Cy Young. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> nice reinvestment. For yeah, that's my, that's my reinvestment like strategy that. right now. I are, like that. Are any of these Orioles prospects Blutman guys? Um, no, or Liam I'm not guys? in baseball like that anymore. Mm, okay. Yeah, he's not in Formerly baseball. when I was in the baseball. Who's the maybe. number one? Who's the number one Liam guy right now? Um, I don't know, to be determined. Or she Rice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, see, we're not doing that. Nathan Rourke would be up there. Uh, it's been a tough offseason. What's the guy you made us guys. bet that never got even a touch? Uh, 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 we had Chargers. Cra- oh, the Rams. Ryan Rivers? Ryan that Rivers. was not even on me. That was on Jerry. <laughs> Jerry saw his name, and yeah. then I was like, yeah, here's Ryan Rivers. One of the all time running backs in Fresno State history. Like, he's a good player. He's small, but he's mighty. Yeah, we bet so much on that. He just never got a carry. In never got one carry. Time. What were you going to say, Connor? Well, I was going to say on the on the topic of winning now, I wanted to ask you before we got out of here about Stephon Diggs. Yeah. Because obviously there was the whole yeah. debate yesterday within the office, like, oh, is the Bills window closed? No. Is Nicky Smokes stupid? Because yeah, Nicky falling... Smokes is stupid. Okay, but – at the same time, trading away Stephon Diggs after Gabe Davis already is gone. Like, yeah, the Bills, what exactly? The you, Bills made him. The, so, I think they had to trade Stephon Diggs because he was clearly like he's been unhappy for what two years now. A long time. A long time. Maybe uh, thirty-ish years. The fault you could make of the Bills is that they went in, they went all in with an old roster the last couple of years, and you saw like even the Chiefs Bills game this year in the playoffs. The Chiefs had a roster that was like one of the youngest rosters in the NFL, mm-hmm. and the Bills had all these old guys. And it's like two different ways to do it, but it clearly didn't work for the Bills because they haven't they don't have a Super Bowl to show for it. So they needed, like I'm a I'm a big believer. Like if you have a quarterback like Josh Allen, you're gonna have to overturn your roster like two three times in the course of his career. They delayed it too much. That's their problem. But now they have to start doing it. Okay. That's I mean they're they're not better after trading Stephon Diggs. That would be crazy to say. But I do think that it's smart that they're finally, like, lining the sand. Like, we got to start 
making some. You got to change decisions. something, right? Yeah, and it's a lot of pressure on him because the the thing when you pay your quarterback that much, you have there's no margin for error in the draft. Right, have to nail your draft picks. Yeah, and the, I love what Houston. I love it for Houston. Like they're going all in with C.J. Stroud. Cause he's he's getting C.J. Stroud outside of just Mahomes because he's Mahomes. I think you could make the argument is the second most valuable quarterback in the NFL right now. On a per, do- on a per dollar basis. Per dollar absolutely. basis. Not the second best, but second most valuable. Yeah. Like Every that. other major AFC quarterback is on a second contract. Correct. And it's like, and he's so good, and he's so cheap, and you have basically three years here to, to go all in with everything. Because, like, that's the thing. If you traded for Stefan Diggs and you're like, oh, this is like a four-year plan, I'd be like, no. Stefan Diggs is going to – you don't – a guy doesn't get traded in his prime twice without being a little bit of an issue, right? Mm-hmm. So you're hoping that it just works for a year or two and you can win a Super Bowl. And I love that. Yeah. Smart move. Is CJ Stroud good enough to win a Super Bowl right now? With those weapons, dude. Yeah. I th- I, he might be. Not that we expect him to, but like. Yeah. There's. The way people talk about quarterbacks is just basically binary. He's but, good enough to win a Super Bowl. He's not good enough to win a Super Bowl. I think he's good. Yeah, I think he's, he's definitely good, good enough right? to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. Eventually, yeah. But I mean, like right, right, like coming in. Yes, year, right yeah, now. Two, I yeah. think right now because this is his best chance to win a Super Bowl with a loaded team. Yeah, he'll not have a loaded team in five years from now. It almost feels like this is like the most quarterbacks that have ever been able to been able to win a Super Bowl, but maybe the fewest that will because Mahomes exists. Right. Like I look at like Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. C.J. Stroud, Trevor Lawrence. I'm like, oh, like these guys are really fucking good, but they're no nowhere even close to Mahomes. Yeah, right. Like I, I'm obviously uh, accused a lot of being a Josh Allen apologist. I understand that. Uh, I think Mahomes has just broken everyone's brain. Where if Mahomes didn't exist, you'd be like, Josh Allen is incredible. Yeah. But because he's not Mahomes, yeah. everyone's like, he stinks. It's like that's not true. Brady did the same thing. Where yeah. Now. You have a guy like Aaron Rodgers who won one Super Bowl, and it's like a failure to win. Like winning one Super Bowl is right. so fucking hard. That's but somehow if you're a guy who's only won like one or two, it's like well he wasn't that good, obviously, right? Because yeah, I think that's the the final level of greatness is uh, not only being great yourself, but stopping other great guys of reaching yeah. that final level. Like MJ stealing titles from all the guys in the '90s, yeah. like you know Brady stealing all these Super Bowls from Manning. And I mean, how many Super Bowls does? Peyton Manning and and like Phil Rivers probably has one. Yeah. Like if Brady just doesn't exist. Yeah. And that's the final step of greatness is being like, not only was I great, but everyone else around me just didn't reach their full potential because of me. Yeah. That's Mahomes, thief of joy. Yeah. He's a thief of joy. Peak Peyton got one. What? Peak like Peak Peyton Manning got one right. Super Bowl. Like Peak Josh Allen would be lucky at this point to get to get one because right. Mahomes is so fucking good. Right. It's crazy. It's yeah. a, it's actually insane to think about like how he's so good, but it's just Mahomes is that. But much then better. also like a, a Joe Burrow goes to the Super Bowl, loses, and there's a belief that he'll be back and he'll win one eventually. It and might that's not. Not. Yeah, could easily we, you fall into that trap all the time. We're like, oh, he's young. His first, you know, he'll, he'll right. be back and he'll have his day in the sun. And it's like I don't know. Right, because they have to turn the roster over a bunch of times. Like they're they're now paying Joe Burrow, and now they have to make the hard decisions. And yeah. I mean, this is why I've, I was a big believer in getting Caleb Williams and, and moving on from Justin Fields because you just open up a finite five-year window where it's like, if this guy is good, everything else can be figured out. But, yeah, there aren't enough Super Bowls to go around. There's only one a year, yeah. I think, if my math is correct. No, we should have two a year. So we should yeah, we have should. two or three a year. <laughs> That's true. Because how is – how is yeah, all those guys you just mentioned, Eva, how are they all going to win Super Bowls in their career? They're, yeah, they're and not. also Mahomes is going to win a couple more. And Josh Allen has to win one, and Trevor Lawrence has to win one, and C.J. Stroud is going to win one, obviously, and Caleb Williams will obviously win one. And I did a whole. Joe Burrow's obviously going to win one, but it's not obvious because Bailey Zappi. Bailey Zappi's <laughs> obviously going to get over the hump. I yeah, think, I think Mac Jones, the new environment, is going to be great for him. What? Mac Jones, <laughs> rapper? Did you see that? <laughs> what? No, I Mac didn't. Jones, like they did some TikTok with the Jaguars or something, and then completely different guy just so energetic and giddy and everything he's like i you know i rap a little Whoa. but now that uh i'm out in new england i'll let you guys know but you guys are never gonna find the raps oh what's up everybody it's mac jones and this is my get to know <laughs> is that good yeah, I mean, it looks like oh he does look happier completely different guy. i don't really have too many but i mean i golf a little bit i like to go fishing like to be on the beach like to do a little bit of rapping oh 
What? What was that? Dog shit at it. What is that at it? Jaguars. I do though. I do. I, I got a couple songs, but they were cooking with that. Nobody one. knows. Nobody knows about it. So I'm what? letting the world know now. I'm not in New England. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Completely different person. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, being a backup quarterback has got to be the greatest thing. Yeah, that's true. Ever. I sent you the tweet that I did because I, I, when I was ha- we were having this debate, it's it basically shows that like the only way to win a Super Bowl or get to a Super Bowl is have a rookie, uh, a, a guy on a rookie contract or Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady. <laughs> that's it. This is the list. So, yeah, every single year, ba- basically every single year, a guy on a rookie contract gets to a Super Bowl and then they just lose to Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady. <laughs> that's it. That's the NFL that's now. The, that's the look at it. It's Purdy, formula. Hurts, yeah. Burrow, Mahomes in twenty was still on his rookie deal. He lost to Tom Brady. Mahomes in nineteen won. Golf lost to Tom Brady. Foles was that was Wentz's rookie deal, so yep. they still weren't paying a ton. Uh, you know, Cam in sixteen was Tom Brady against Matt Ryan. They both were getting paid a lot, but Tom Brady. Cam in fifteen. Russ lost to Tom Brady in fourteen. Won. Like it's just that's that's it. That's that's the that's what you got to do in the NFL. All right. Yeah. Oh, we didn't do our jerseys. Yeah, we. Oh we, yeah. We stopped at, at Bloodman. He at the Mooseheads. I love. I'm teachers. wearing Bloodman. How long have you? What's the longest you've stood there? Mm, I guess we'll find out. Okay. <laughs> I'm wearing a Wrigleyville jersey that they handed out like one of the last games of the year last year. They that's why, you that's that? why it has 23. Yeah, this was a giveaway at a at a, a Cubs game last year. I'm squeezed so in. Nothing too, a, nothing too special. A UTA. <laughs> what size is that? I don't know. It's not, <laughs> it doesn't fit. The jerseys are jer- game worn jerseys you, are an issue. Yeah, is that's that probably a two X and that like wait, that's game worn. It's it looks like a team issue. Like I have a couple yeah, of Rutgers ones that are tight. I don't have it. I don't have it. But this is a good thing because they whoever sent you that thought highly of you. Yeah, they they're wanted. Like, yeah, they're like big cats. Uh, or no. Or is this, or or were they trolling think, you and they're like, this no. would be funny to watch him try to squeeze into this? If we're being honest, I think they asked for my size and I just, I was like, by the time this gets to me, I've been really <laughs> XL. And that didn't happen. But yeah, UTA, uh, they were very exciting. I watched uh, their, I think they beat Tarleton State at 2 a.m. Conference Championship Week. And I was like, I love this team so yeah. much. Um, so yeah, I'm a UTA mm-hmm. guy. And then had the the game the next night against Grand Canyon, where we got to see the the fastball thrown that they ignited a war. Oh, that's right. That was that game. People yeah. forget yeah. that happened in March. Hmm. I was going to say this month, but it's yeah. April. Yeah. yeah. All so right. UTA, shout out to you. Uh, Connor, what are you? Who are you wearing? I am wearing uh, Joel Embiid City Edition Boathouse Row. I got this from at Come See CJ uh, oh. from Opening Day. So thank you to CJ. I love this jersey. Joel Embiid's back. Okay. It's, um... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a horrendous-looking jersey. Like, what is I, going on? It's not my favorite. <laughs> it's not my favorite City Edition. Uh, you got to go back to the... <laughs> what? The what number is, up what the is, top. Like, what is the, going on? It's Boathouse Row. What I understand Philadelphia. that. It's terrible. But anyway... It's just... It's, it's not your fault. You didn't design it as far as I know. No. The, the Sixers' best city edition jersey was 2017-18 with the cream jerseys. Yes, those were awesome. Uh, especially, you know, J.J. Redick. Oh, I love that. But anyway, yeah. uh, this was a couple years. They, they've started to try and reinvent the wheel too much. Why do we do much. city jerseys? The NBA jerseys. Why do they? Stink. <laughs> they yeah. stink. I hate, I, for what it's worth, I hate when the Cubs wear the Wrigleyville. Yeah, me too. I, I hate these jerseys. I just. Money had grab. It. I had it in my closet. I hate when UTA where's really tight jerseys yeah. yeah. really fit yeah. skin tight Tuesdays yeah uh, Ebo uh, this is also a opening day gift from I believe CJ of uh, Alex Ovechkin future all time goal scorer in the NHL is he gonna break the record he's like uh, under 50 oh really yeah, he's like and they'll just keep trotting him out there until he does it 46-ish away I would say yeah he'll get it I assume Gretzky has it mm-hmm. yeah should we Gretzky, do some LeBron yeah, dialogue agree, but... then when he Breaks Gretzky's record and like, well, he's the greatest. He's the most points ever, the most goals ever. He's the greatest scorer ever. Oh, gotta be the goat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, Ovechkin. Yeah, oh, Ovechkin's not getting points or assists. Well, he's gonna have the most goals ever. He's gonna have. The... Yeah, you could have. When you said Le- when you said LeBron him. scored the most, when you said you Le- just asking if we could do the debate means we can do the debate. Okay, let's. Yeah. Yeah. When you said the LeBron dialogue, I thought you meant just name people. <laughs> yeah, <to play laughs> yeah. Of what I don't said. think that um, we could do that debate. LeBron. No, we can because we already just I, said we LeBron's could. the greatest score score of all time because he has the most points. You could do any debate you want. That's true. 
Yeah. You can do any debate. Yeah. It's true. Maybe I'll think of something. Okay. Maybe, Maybe you won't. <laughs> no, come back to me tomorrow for that. Okay. I'm not ready now. TJ, what are you guys doing for? Oh, you guys are wearing the Joe Burrow. This is awesome. Burrow. Burrow. <laughs> With the CFP patch on there. Yeah. We are less than a month away from the Connor Griffin Star Wars murder oh, special, I'm, I, by I the way. Involved. Yes, Wait, you will be there. Uh, when the first, last time yeah. I was here. We have to figure out what date we want exactly because May the 4th is on a Saturday. Yeah. So maybe it's the day before. I don't know. But I am the most excited should I've we, ever been for a day. Should we work. do a bonus episode? Should we record we it? We could. Some, should we record it? We uh, we could gauge and re- interest and release it on a Saturday as a bonus, or do you want to do the third or the Friday before? I could ask to be live. Yeah, live all the live. Warts. live is funny. Yeah, should be live. Yeah, should we get some some of the Star Wars people in here? Like, should Robbie Fox be here? Or? I thought you were talking Jeff about characters. Yeah, Jeff said that. Uh, no, well, can we get Harrison Ford. You get Harrison Chewbacca Ford. here. Can we get a real, can we get a real <laughs> dude? Chewbacca? The guy who played Chewbacca dude. is a Penn State basketball alumni, and I have connections. Uh, Liam, so you were maybe. you were telling me last week you do a great Chewbacca voice. Can you do that for the people real quick. <laughs> Rawr. <laughs> Nailed what, it. What's what's his voice? What? Go ahead, Connor. What? Connor, I don't want Connor, give him, Connor, words. give him, uh, give him a taste real quick so he. Can... I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. Pretty good. That's pretty you good. just can't. have to roll your tongue. I Why'd you know. say I can't? You knew you could. No, because I, I, I haven't done, I haven't broken it out since like middle school. Can you do <laughs> the voice of that uh, bird from the planet Octoon? Oh, uh, the pork? pork? No, I can't do the pork. I'll wear that shirt Monday. Uh, my a porkable shirt. Should we, should we do like outfits and stuff for that? Yeah. Well, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I will have the outfit. Oh, oh. nice. Because they they coordinate with the characters. I'm a size uh, XL. Okay, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be that. Yeah, way. Big, Ever cat, do, big like... cat has got to be involved. Um, who else is? Uh, was there anyone else that was going to be involved? Yeah, we could get Robbie Fox. We could. I, I, how how much of a spectacular do you want to make this? Oh, uh, I'm under pressure. Are we using? Ju- is it just the studio? Is it the whole? It's going to be just the studio. Okay. Nice. So we we do have to be careful about yeah, like microphones and maybe packing this couch too much. I don't know, but uh, it's the storyline is all laid out, and now it's just a matter of <laughs> uh, figuring out the props and the outfits and everything. I want a purple. But I will bring it all. I will bring it all. I'm so excited. I want a purple one. Connor, uh, you, ever, you ever do like the like Star Wars conventions or Comic Con or cosplaying or anything like that? Uh, no, I do follow a, a cosplayer uh, on <laughs> TikTok who's a big crush of mine. But uh, oh, I <laughs> I have not done that, and I would love to go to a convention, but I, I haven't been to any. Maybe there will be one in North Dakota when the wedding. Is. Maybe we got to get you a convention. That'd be I, dude. I, I'd go ballistic at a convention. I love it. <laughs> I'd go ballistic. Please don't. That's a, I, need Please that, don't. I need that quote card. I'd go dude, ballistic at a convention. Dude, I'd go. Pol- I'd go ballistic I, I, at a convention. Any Ball, convention or balls to the wall. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> all out. Caitlin Walker as Princess Leia. Yeah. yeah, she has to go. Or Connor as Princess Connor as Princess. Yeah, Leia. I love. Oh, I, love oh, oh. I love a gender switch. I love her being like Darth well, Vader. Your Princess yeah. Leia. Well, you ever been Princess uh, Leia, Connor? Uh. Uh-oh. I was said yeah. something this well, weekend. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> was, uh, oh, no. All right. There was all one right. time. All right. All right. Connor Griffin might be her. No, I'm not. He might be No, I got to see it. No, we got to see it. Okay. We got to see it. Oh! Yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> Connor Griffin is her. Dermothy. Oh, my God. That was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> it was, it was just, I wasn't, I wasn't going to bring it up. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Wait, how'd you find that? Someone DM'd it to me. Oh, really? All right, I guess I have to scrub that off the internet. Well, now I can't. Um, that was in high you're school. You're not even hot. Obviously, I'm not hot. Dude. I No, but I mean, if you're going to be Princess Leia, get get hot, dude. Did, did no. You, did you put blush on? Like, no, 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 no. That was just me. Are, your cheeks blushing, yeah, red, yeah. Naturally red face. Right. No, um, that was in high school. That was for a spirit week. And I was uh, so good. I was always trying to like <laughs> think outside the box with my costume. You did. And you uh, outside the box. It was Star Wars Day, so I, I dressed up as this. <laughs> we need to get this. Connor's into, like, the goat. We need to get oh, this into, like, Connor. Connor, yeah. Connor's my favorite. Connor's aura is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> aura is crazy. <laughs> we need to get this into like Joe Rogan or Ben Shapiro's hands, being like, "There's high school students." <laughs> yeah. 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 It was. It was also funny because that was at the same time uh, I had broke a bone in my foot from basketball, and I was in a like a, one of those inflatable boots. So I was walking around. If I could find the full picture, I would. 
it's an inflatable boot, and then from that up, it's just me and the Princess Leia, like, dressed <laughs> with the fucking head buns. And oh, everything. my God, that's so perfect. Uh, I love it. Uh, Big Cat, thank you for filling in for Brandon. Yes. Um, hope, hope Brandon's thumbs are doing okay. A lot of video games he's going to be playing these next few days. He's, he's uh, on a, a stream on a channel with 100 million subscribers today. Oh my if God. he doesn't shout out this show, I'm going to be so well, fucking... the Yak, he shout out the... He doesn't like the Yak. He doesn't right? like the Yak. The Yak is a nuisance uh, really in this show. This show is his top priority, He so he does like this show. He, this show... Um, he would never miss He would show. never miss this show for anything. That's that, It's his number one priority, so uh, surely... He will shout us out on the on whatever channel he's playing video games on. But um, appreciate you filling in, Big Cat. Yes, of course. I'll see Thanks you guys to on Monday. Watch. Early. Yeah, I know, dude. We got an early show Monday. 7 a.m. 7. We did that all week for Super Bowl. Week, though. We're just, yeah. just building a little different here in mostly sports, except for Brandon. Uh, thanks, everybody, watching. Please subscribe. Please comment for the algorithm. We'll see you tomorrow. That's Family. how ball is done. Sorry. That's all right. No, you go. That's how ball is done. Family.